What is going on, people? It's Eliza from my charge back. Before we get started, please don't forget to click a like and subscribe. And if you've been the victim of a scam or a hack, please click the link in the description below to speak with us. Now, folks, I have a special treat with you guys. You hear me say blockchain this, blockchain that. Blockchain forensics is the basics and the absolute base of fighting crypto crime. And I have with me none other than two of the best in the biz, our very own head of crypto investigations, Mr. Evan Spicer. And Sam Feinsod, who is in charge of every country that speaks Spanish, and that's a lot of countries. Nobody gets to do more traces or spend more time on the blockchain than these guys. So take out your pen and paper and listen up. Fellas, thank you so much for taking the time to be with me. So let's dive right into this. What happens? Let's just start here. What happens when a transaction occurs on a blockchain? Thank you very much for your kind words, Elijah. Look, when I'm transferring to another address, it uh, it goes into something called a mempool, okay? Now, the mempool is this, you know, space where it's like a waiting room, you know, you'd, like you're going into a, uh, into a room and you're waiting there. So it's waiting in terms of getting actually to the address that you're sending it to. So, you know, the victim's address would be sending to, you know, in our case, we see time and time again, the scammer's address. Now, it's not actually getting there in real time until it's actually been confirmed by, by the miners who, uh, who actually confirm the transfer. But uh, there is a time delay. But, but essentially, when, um, when, when we're transferring from one address to another, it's sitting there in the mempool and it's waiting until it's been actually, actually arrives at the destination address. The input versus the output the input is when um is on the one side which is the um, the sender and the output is of uh is is, is reaching is reaching the uh, the scammer what do you say uh, sam uh, well of course to add and explain things in a different way uh, you make the fiat purchase uh, with your card with a wire transfer you get the crypto and then once you have the crypto you are either sending it to someone so it would simply be like a wire transfer and there is a gas fee what would be a commission from a bank fee when you're sending the money from one place to another so in a way it's pretty much the same as it would be in the normal banking system but in this case it's in the public blockchain so it's completely recorded for us to be able to investigate yeah the wire transfer is similar to ethereum when it's going from one to one when it's working on the smart contract but then again i forgot to mention with bitcoin transfers if you have the change they have this small change going through so when is the input you know input sends a certain amount of money it's going to actually re return a certain amount back as the small change too so that actually comes into play as well thanks guys see that's important a lot of people don't know that now there's a lot of tricks that scammers traditionally use for money laundering and this is the evidence that law enforcement understands to be ah i got it that's a crime right that's the key moment because it does not look like a normal transaction. Guys, what tricks do scammers traditionally use that you guys know right off the bat, ah, it's a scammer. Take it away. Well, I'll tell you something. When a bank robber takes money from the bank and he's taking, he's taking, he's taking the money from the heist, I tell you, it's not a little bit dissimilar to the crypto world. You know, I mean, he's taking his ill-gotten gains and he's jumped into his car and he's racing and he's racing trying to get. So he'll take the money that he's got in his back boot and he'll send it to another car and another car and another car. And then eventually he'll get to here and place it in somewhere. Now, it's a little bit similar on the blockchain. It's a little bit similar. You know, he's taking here the address that he finally, the scammer, he's got the address. He'll transfer it to another address and another address and another address. And it really trying desperately to confuse anyone who's looking at this on the chain if they know these things exist if they if they understand that the blockchain forensics teams are out there and it also pump pumble it through you know as you said mixers and tumblers to just essentially you know throw everyone off the beaten track and trying to try and eventually get to the uh, the the, um, the final destination is that what you've seen sam as well well, I mean, yeah, maybe in a way, uh, I think that the, the, the tricks that these bad actors might actually be using are quite creative. Uh, they get renewed all the time. It's, it's all about what you need, what you do not know. And they're going to use all of that against you uh, so that they can literally take charge and, and 
trick you or deceive you into doing something that you shouldn't be doing on the blockchain like uh, like here my boss was saying <laughs> but yeah yeah and, I, and there are so many there are so many um, services that provide uh, obfuscation tricks that's a big word obfuscation it's basically hi deliberate hiding of some sort of like um, like there's a one called ricochet which is uh, based on the samurai I think the, the tool where it literally goes from hop to hop to hop to hop to hop one two three four and the exact same exact same amount from one two three four hops and then the fifth hop is that's the one it's it, it where it pops out um, there's of course CoinJoin, which is a uh, which is a whole different ball game ball da, ball game altogether. But um, you know the, the sky's the limit with these guys. That's great. Thanks. By the way, you guys should know you are right looking in the heart of my chargeback. All right, less people like to wonder: Is it real? Is it this? Is it that? Yeah, it's real. You're right in the heart of it. So, folks, let's just update this. It's a new year. You got new tricks being used by money mules, by scammers. What's the latest and greatest in trying to throw off the trail? There's been a, a really strange one. I saw a trace not so long ago. He received it on the Ethereum token, and literally in the next top, it just went nowhere. Literally, boom, it's not going anywhere. And I had to ask the experts for this one. It's called a fake token. They told me it was a fake token. Essentially, when you send it to this particular fake token, it literally sucks your trend, your your contents of your trace, and it doesn't go anywhere. Of course, it's a very difficult, very good, very difficult job in tracing, um, and uh, we do our best there are techniques to find it. But um, it's basically the latest in the in the series of, uh, of of what we said before, the obfuscation trick. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I think I remember the the case that you were talking about. It was a. A Shiba Inu NFT smart contract uh, that it was uh, a bit complicated to read, but it was uh, it was quite an adventure uh, because there was a lot of uh, research that had to be done so that it would be able to find the output addresses of where the real worth value currency was actually going to, which was the actual uh, uh, bad actor in the end. But yeah, it was uh, quite incredible. Uh, but you've seen. But, but you've, technology you, is advancing. You see, you see this on your uh, on, on on where they arrive. These NFT tokens, these actually uh, fake tokens arrive, don't you? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, I actually have <laughs> quite a lot of those in my <laughs> in one of my wallets because uh, it's when when you're doing any type of a transaction out there in the blockchain, your transactions get recorded out there. So somebody's using those transactions to send you that type of information. Those NFTs that end up being hacks that. If you interact with them, they'll drain your funds. Mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah, different ones like that, yeah. All right, so one last thing, because I know you guys got work to do. To those that are holding crypto, aren't you just holding it? What do you do to keep it safe? And what do you do to avoid malicious addresses? Well, um, don't go on the internet is what I would say. <laughs> But anyway, that's that's I'm I'm an extremist when it comes to these things. <laughs> Essentially, you've got some bitcoins or Ethereum, just take it offline. So just put it in, put it in, put it in your cold storage wallet and keep it safe for any day and see uh, and watch the price go up and down and up and down and hopefully you catch it when it's uh, when it's up. What do you say there, Sam? Um, actually, it's it's quite a great answer. I mean, yes, the best way it's just to huddle and to keep them in a cold wallet off the internet so that nobody can interact with your coins. And if you're going to be an adventurer that likes DeFi and maybe sometimes invests in new adventures, well, be very safe. Always do your research. Make sure that you're not interacting with something that might um, end up just tricking you. you. Always do your due diligence, just like, well, to be honest, just like what a regulator would have to do so that you have all that off the table but yeah you do the that research that's what we need to do so that you can always keep yourself safe from the internet because it, it is dangerous out there honestly all right guys thank you so much for being with us today you guys heard it first and if you have to watch this a few times that's okay too because so will i so if you've been the victim of scam please click the link in the description below that's hacks too so trace just the same I've been Elijah, he's been Evan, he's been Sam, we'll see you next time.